How's it going guys? So today we're going to be making this really cool, satisfying animation with geometry nodes. So I should just quickly mention this is heavily inspired by a guy that I follow on Instagram. His name is Junichiro Horikawa and he makes these really awesome geometrical animations. So I'll link to him in the description below. So let's just get straight into it. So I'm just going to clear my scene and create a new collection. And in this collection, I'm just going to add in a cube and let's just make a new geometry nodes network here and call this scale animation and so basically what we're doing is we're going to be creating a circle and then we're going to instance a bunch of smaller circles all the way around it to make that cool pattern so to start off with let's just grab a curved circle let's disconnect that and plug this into the group output and let's just straight away grab a resample curve and plug that in here and then let's just instance on points and plug that right there so now basically we have our circle and we need to instance a bunch of other small circles onto it. So let's just shift D this, plug that into the instance. And we're actually going to need a transform node because you can see they're all kind of flipped the wrong way. So let's just put, plug a transform node in here and put the rotation on the X axis 90 degrees like so. And now we basically need to align the rotations to the circle that we created here. And the quickest way to do that is with the align Euler to vector. So let's go shift A, align Euler to vector. And we actually need a special input for this curve circle that we're going to be aligning to. And the input is just called curve tangent. So we need the tangent of this curve. So let's grab the curve tangent, plug that into the vector. And then let's plug the vector into the rotation. And you'll see it's currently rotating, but we want to do this on the Y axis. That way we can make sort of a donut shape. All right, cool. So that's basically the curve of this done. But now let's actually just hook up some group inputs to make this more procedural and a little bit more easier to work with when we're not in geometry nodes. So let's just grab a socket here and plug this into the curve circle resolution. And we want to basically edit the resolution and the radius of the curve at the same time. So if we plug this in currently, you'll see the radius is going to go wild. And if we were to play with the resolution on the fly, it's not really going to fly. So what we need to do is grab a math node. So let's go shift a math. Let's just unplug this from the radius for now. And what we'll do is grab the resolution, plug that into the top here, and let's just divide this by an arbitrary number. So let's just bring this up to something like that and plug it in. There we go. So now when we play with the resolution, you'll see it's not as crazy, but we will need to update this as we go along. So maybe let's do something like that for now. Um, we can always edit this later, but for now, that seems good. So what we'll want to do as well is actually plug the resolution into the resample curve, because this is all going to be basically controlled by one input here, as you'll see. So the larger the resolution, the more curves there'll be, and the lower the resolution, the, the less curves there'll be. So that's basically how we're gonna make this whole thing a procedural kind of effect. So just make sure this is plugged into the resample curve count. And while we're here, we may as well rename that to something more appropriate. So press N on your keyboard to bring up this properties tab and just click on group. Then just click on resolution and change the name, something more appropriate like maybe amount of scales. There we go. So now it's updated here and you can play with it on the fly as you go. Cool, so that's basically the first part done. So I'm just gonna select everything, press Control J to frame that up and we may as well give it a color and a name. So let's just call this donut circle, something like that. So now let's move on to the next section where we're actually going to instance the scales onto the circles here. So let's go Shift A, grab another mesh circle. Let's drop that there. Now let's add in another instance on points node, just like that. Drop the mesh circle into the instance and we'll drop the instances into the points. And then lastly, drop that into the geometry. So you see it's going pretty wild. <laughs> um, basically, we just need to change the radius and change the fill type from none to n gone. It's actually going to give us the scales that we need to, to play with to get this whole effect working. So with that, we can change the vertices to whatever we need. Um, the lower they are, you'll get more sort of triangle shapes. And the higher they are, the more circular they'll be. So I'll just leave mine at like 20 for now. And I'll just play 
play the radius a little bit to get something more uniform here to work with just for now. Uh, so that looks pretty good. So I'll keep that as is for now. But you can see we need to sort of play with the rotation because if we were completely side on, it's almost like they're just layered on top of each other. So we need to fix the rotation of these scales. So to do that, let's grab another curve tangent, drop that here, and let's also grab another align Euler to vector. So grab your tangent, plug that into the vector, and then we'll actually need to grab a vector math node. So shift A, search for vector math, keep that on add, and let's just put the rotation here in the top, and the vector, we'll plug that into the rotation. Um, and now you can see everything is uniformly rotating around the donut that we've created here. So we've almost got the effect down pat, but now we need to play with a few of these parameters. So if you start rotating these, you'll kind of see what's happening. So I believe we need to rotate Y. Yep, there we go. Let's do something like this. And then let's just sort of stylize it to look a little bit more like scales. So currently I think these parameters look pretty good. You can see you can even kind of get some really cool stylized effects just like this. But for now, I think these parameters here will do. So if you want to copy that, you can. But for now, this part of the setup is basically done. We essentially just need to now make the scales more checkered or more like, look a little bit more like scales because currently they're all just sort of uniform. And we also need to animate the organic rotation that you saw in the intro. So let's jump into that now. So basically for the rotations of the scales, it's a bunch of math and it might sound a little bit scary, but it's pretty straightforward. So I'll just walk you through it. So let's just grab another group input. So group input, and we're actually going to use the parameter we made here, amount of scales as the driver for the rotations. So basically if we just grab a math node, set this to divide and plug the amount of scales into the value. And basically we want to make this whole thing do a full 360 degrees rotation by the end of our animation, which will be 360 degrees. So what we can do is just grab a multiply node. So math, make this multiply and we'll change the value of this divide to 360. I'll plug the value into the top here. And we basically just want to convert this to uh, radians because we're going to be rotating these instances. So just quickly, I'm going to move this, this little node network here down just a tad. So we have a little bit more room to play with. Let's now just grab another math node. So shift D on this. Let's change this to from multiply to conversion to radians. Plug this into here to the degrees. Awesome. And now we basically just want to grab a instance rotation node. So let's just search rotate instances and we're going to plug this into the chain of command here. So instance on points, we're going to rotate our instances and basically we need to figure out which scales to sort of move so that we can have them look more scale like and that's fairly simple to do. So before we finish up this rotation animation, let's actually just figure that out. So we just grab the index of these. So index and we use a math function called modular. So search for math. Let's just change this to modular. Um, basically you'll see it's under the rounding section and modular is basically, it'll round to a number and then sort of repeat itself. So if we plug the index of all of these scales, so it starts from zero to I think whatever sample curve we have, which is 56, so zero to 56 and we set the value to be every second curve or sorry, every second scale or every even number in the index, we'll be able to sort of offset the scales so it looks more natural. So let's just pull these up a little bit and I'm just going to pull my radians down here and add in a few more uh, math nodes. So let's shift E on this. And let's just change this to multiply. So change this to multiply. And we're basically going to multiply multiply the rotations here. So plug this in the top. And then we'll plug the modulo into the bottom. So following on from that, let's grab another math node and change this to addition. Plug the value in here at the top. And then lastly, let's grab a combine XYZ node. So shift A, combine XYZ. 
And the reason why we're doing this is because we want to rotate the Y axis, as you can see. So if we can somehow correlate the Y axis to the frame rate, we're going to be able to have this go from frame one to frame 360 procedurally. So we won't have to manually animate this. So let's plug this into the vector here. We only want to touch the Y axis. So if we plug this into Y, you'll see something change there. So if we start playing with this, you'll see we can now offset these scales slightly. So what we can do is just sort of multiply this to something that looks more natural. So I'm just putting mine to negative three for now, but I can always come back and play with that. And you can see also we can play with the amount of scales as well on the fly. So currently let's just put this to, let's say 55. That looks fairly decent. So now that we have this whole setup here, what we can do is if you're using Blender 3.2 Alpha like I am, or like any version of the newest Blender, there should by now be a node, which basically is the scene time or scene frame. So you can just search scene time. And what we can do is convert the scene frame to a radian. So one radian would be one degrees, 360 radians would be 360 degrees. So we can just do that by using a math node. So drop that down there, convert this to radians. And if we plug the frame in here, Basically, like I was saying, whatever frame this is on will be the degrees. So if it's at frame 318, the scales will have rotated 318 degrees, which is pretty cool. And the way we do that procedurally is just by hooking this up to the add math node that we created here. So just hook it up there and you'll see something very slight happened. But if we hit play, you'll see this is now playing in real time and it's a seamless loop. So there's really, um, you'll see once it hits 360, it just flips over so there's no more sort of uh, animation that you need to do manually we've done it completely procedurally right here which is awesome so again you can play with this and sort of stylize it to whatever you like I think that seems pretty good for now so I'm happy with that what I might do is just jump down here to our initial scales and I'll just change the radius slightly to something a little larger so 0.1 and again you can always come down here and play with the initial rotations that we created for the scales until you get something that you're happy with so if I just jump into material preview you can kind of see a little better what's happening looks a lot nicer in material preview because there's actually shadows and if we hit play you'll see we have this really nice nice looking procedural animation happening which is awesome that's basically the whole effect done, but now we need to create the cool materials for this. So let's just drag this up here. And to actually create the materials, we need to do a few things first. So straight away, we need to create these instances and, and make them actual mesh. So to do that, you just need to realize the instance. So shift A, let's go realize instances, drop that in there, and then just after that in the chain of command here we need to add a material node so just search for set material drop that in and now basically we can just select our new and now we can just select our object here i'm just going to rename this to scale animation uh, make sure that's selected and just click new in your shader editor so if you don't have one you can just jump into shading into the shader workspace select your object and then click new material and let's just call this scales tutorial. Awesome. So we will need to jump back to geometry nodes because we need to create some attributes to pull from geometry nodes and use in the shader editor workspace. So back into geometry nodes, we're gonna connect a few things here to the group output. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab a random value. I'm just gonna plug that into this secondary socket here. And on your geometry nodes modifier here, there's a little output attributes drop down. So if you click that, you'll see I now have a random value, which is named value. So if I just go group, come down to outputs and click on value, you'll see it's called value and that whatever we put in here. So let's just say scale faces. We now have this as an attribute to use in the shader editor. So now that we have scale faces, we also need to make sure that the value is actually using face data, not uh, not points. So 
If we were to use points, it would look a little bit different. It would still look pretty okay. But we want to make this use the face, the actual face of the scale. So just change this over to face. And the type can be a float because it's going to be a float number or like, you know, one, two, three. Um, it's going to be a value from zero to one. So that's fine. We can keep that. And the other thing we need to add is actually the scene time or the frame uh, as an attribute. So if we just grab the frame, drag that over here and plug that into the third socket, you can see we now have something called frame. So we can just call this frame. And keep in mind that these are case sensitive. So I might just rename this to something like scales or lowercase. And now that we have those two attributes, we basically now have a way to link geometry nodes directly to the shaded editor um, in a very clever way. And you'll see what I mean in a sec. So let's jump on back into the shading tab. And it's probably a good idea to go into material preview so you can see what you're doing. But now we have our scales tutorial material here and let's just start adding in some attributes. So if you go shift A, search for attribute, and we're going to need two of these. So just shift D, make two of them. Um, and let's also grab a color ramp. So shift A, color ramp, as well as a hue saturation node. So just search for a hue slash saturation. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to use the attribute of the scales face. So if you'll recall, we have a value for scales. So let's use the value scales attribute. So I'm just going to copy that and plug that into the name. So literally just copy paste the attribute into the name. And just while we're here, we'll do that for this one as well. So we're going to be using the scenes frames for, for this. So just go to frame and just type in or paste in frame. And now basically we're going to use the factor of each face. It's basically a factor from zero to one. So grab the factor of this, plug this into the factor of the color ramp. And we're going to select, let's just go with like a light pink. To actually see what we're doing in action, you'll need to plug this into the base color. Um, and if nothing's showing up like it is for me, it's still the same white material. It's because we actually haven't set the material in geometry nodes. Let's just quickly jump back to geo nodes and do that. So back in geo nodes, you can see we've got our set material node and there's no material selected. So just click on this and search for your material. So scales tutorial. Awesome. So you'll see now it's updated. So back to the shading tab and you'll see now each face basically has their own color ramp applied to them, which is really cool. But we don't want it to be just this bland sort of color ramp from one color to the other. We want the scene frame to basically tell this color ramp, what um, hue or what color it should be as the time goes on. So I'm just going to change this to like a light, lighter pink. And I think I'm going to also plug this into the subsurface color as I'm going to be using cycles during this. So, so I'll bump that up to like one just to test it out. And now what we can do is we'll actually plug this color into the hue saturation value node here. And we're going to use the scene frame number as the factor for the hue saturation. So if we plug factor into hue and we plug the color of the hue saturation value into subsurface color and into base color, you'll see it's already changed color already, but if we hit play, um, nothing is happening. So to fix that issue, basically we just need to add a divide, a math function in here. So let's go math. Plug this in here and if we just change this from add to divide and then ramp this up a bit you'll see something is happening so basically what we're doing is we're dividing the frame number to basically 360 degrees so if we just type in 360 degrees and hit play you'll see now it's going to go through the whole timeline here it's going to go through the entire hue sort of color wheel and it's going to loop all the way back to blue and basically start its function again. So yeah, that's how you make this really cool procedural scale effect. So now all that's left to do is just to set up a quick scene, some lights and render this out in either EB or cycles, whatever you prefer. I'll also be putting this up on my gum road just so if you want to look at my file or inspect my file, you can. So link in the description for that. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.